Hi. Today we're going to be discussing the patterns of dispersion. This refers to the spatial relationship between members of a population. Let's get started. So our three different patterns include clump dispersion, uniform dispersion, and random dispersion. We're going to go through each one and look at examples of each. Clump dispersion uh, occurs when individuals cluster together. Now this is the most common pattern of dispersion and there's a lot of examples of it. So as you can see on the diagram on the right, the individuals are clumped together and they sort of aggregate on top of each other as we're going to see in these pictures. So our first example refers to plants and fungi uh, where these individuals will aggregate on top of each other in order to increase uh, conditions that allow for germination and growth. Next we're going to look at some sea stars. Uh, sea stars also uh, undergo clump dispersion because it allows food to be more attainable and it allows for an increased rate of reproduction uh, and breeding uh, because, of, because of the fact that they're clumped on top of each other. Our third example of clump dispersion is uh, a wolf pack and this is a very common example because these wolves will often times join together and will roam together uh, this allows them not only to be more uh, vicious predators, but it also allows for them to def defend one another in, in the case of a predator uh, attacking them. Next, we have uniform dispersion. And as you can see in the picture on the right, this is when individuals are evenly distributed. Now, a main uh, benefit of this type of uh, dispersion is that it helps maintain territories, as you can see in this example right here. So in this picture on the right, we see nesting penguins, and they're all equally apart from each other. And this leads to uh, them setting up a territory that is useful uh, to allow them to maintain um, their location and also the conditions uh, that come with having a position like that, such as uh, access to food and other nutrients. Another good example of uniform dispersion is the Salvia leucophila. And this is a plant that secretes toxins that kills other plants around it. And so the interesting thing about this is that each plant will uh, form a sort of radius in which no other plants could form next to it because uh, the toxins that it secretes will actually kill them. And so this leads to a sort of uniform dispersion uh, where all of the individuals are uh, have a space between them. And this leads to a defense of their territory because no other animal, uh, no other individuals will come near it, and it helps uh, uh, factor into the idea of the territoriality. Lastly, we have random dispersion, and as you can guess, this is just unpredictable spacing, where individuals will be positioned independent of the others. So it's generally, as you could tell, it's going to be random, no matter where one individual is, an individual can be clumped on top of it, or it could be five miles away. So as you can see in that picture, that's what it shows. And the most common example of this is dandelions. Uh, I'm sure you've seen if you've gone to the park or even uh, right outside on your lawn, uh, dandelions will be spread out uh, in completely different ways. There's no uniform uh, or clump dispersion. There's no way to individually uh, describe them in that way. It's There's all kinds of ways in which they could be organized. And you know this is very common for other sorts of plants because a lot of them uh, are affected by the way that the wind blows their seeds and that'll have a very big impact on how uh, they'll continue to grow. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below. Please be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.